In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to wire the garage that you see here behind me. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. This channel's all about building your own house, saving a ton of money, so be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask in return for making this video. So before I get started running the wires, I wanna take you through Garage Wiring 101. So let's get started. Welcome to Garage Wiring 101. This is gonna be six common rules or codes that are gonna be used while wiring your garage and always check your local building codes to see what you need to do to wire your garage. But in my area, these are the ones that are enforced and they're common practices as far as I know. But again, always check your local building codes. So the first thing is receptacles and lights on a separate circuit, on two different circuits. And the reason why that is, is if you're using an outlet in your garage and it throws the breaker, you still have your lights above. And also while we're talking about it, bathrooms are the same way right now. So it's very important to have those on two different circuits, but your outlets or your receptacles must be on its own circuit by itself with nothing else. You can't have garage outlets mixed with your bedroom outlets, for instance. It has to be on its own circuit. And that brings me to the next thing is receptacles must be on a 20 amp circuit. So for a 20 amp circuit to be achieved, you must use what's called 12 wire. And this is 12 gauge wire. And you can only use a 20 amp breaker with 12 gauge wire. You cannot use 14 wire because 14 wire is too small of a gauge. It's only for 15 amps. So use a 20 amp circuit for your outlets. And three, receptacles on a GFI. And you can do this via either a breaker, that's a GFI breaker, or you can use a GFI outlet and then use that to your first outlet and it's gonna put a GFI protection on the remaining outlets. For instance, I can show you when we go to wire this garage, the example, but if, you're, if your home run's coming from your breaker box to the out, first outlet, if that one's a GFI outlet, it protects all the other outlets on that same circuit. So you can't put your GFI on the last outlet because it only protects that last outlet. So whatever outlet you come to and the ones thereafter are gonna be protected on a GFI if you use a GFI outlet in that case. So the next rule in my area is receptacle must be placed in each vehicle bay. So what this means is what it says, you just had to have one receptacle in each vehicle bay. So if you have two bay garage, you gotta make sure there's at least the receptacle in each one of those bays. I personally run more than that. I run it just about like a bedroom. I run them about every six to eight foot apart. So that way there's gonna be an outlet readily available if I need it. So that's for me personally but check with your local building codes to see how often you need to have a receptacle in your garage. And number five, receptacles cannot be higher than 66 inches on the wall. So this is pretty common, pretty much common sense. Obviously you don't want a receptacle way up here and have to plug in where you can't reach it, but I figured I'd mention that because it is the code in my area. And notice it says on the wall and it doesn't say on the ceiling because you can run your garage door opener outlet on the same circuit as the outlets around the floor. And so you can have it up in the ceiling, which I'm gonna be doing that, because I wanna have two garage door openers because I got two garage bays. And if you've been following my channel, I've been building this house, you see me frame up the garage door openings and everything, so thanks for watching up till this point, I appreciate it. All right guys, let's go back into the garage and start running some wire. Before I show you how I'm gonna wire this garage, I wanted to point out to you that as you can see, there's drywall on the ceiling and that's because I had to get these garage doors installed here behind me a few months ago. In order to do that, we had to get the track up against these trusses and you need the drywall installed ahead of time because you can't do it later. So I already ran the wiring for the lights behind the drywall. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you the receptacles and just point out a few things before we get started. Let me show you what I already got done here. So I mounted a three gang box here. And the reason why there's a three gang, so there's gonna be three switches. There's gonna be one for the inside lights, one for the outside lights. And then I'm gonna put a switch here to control a lamp post outside. And another thing I wanted to show you, when you have this many wires coming into a box, it's always nice to use these wire stackers. And these keep your wires looking nice and uniform. And you can get these in my Amazon store. You can check out the link in the description below. And I do get a small commission from any purchases, but it's at no extra cost to you. So this is running up to this single gang box up here. 
and then it bunny hops to that one and then there's one back in the back here then there's one right here in this corner so those are all going to be for the inside lights and then these are the receptacles for the garage door openers one here and then one here so as you can see these are connected or coming down over here so we're going to have to get power over to this 12 2 wire and we're going to do that by coming in from here this is a home run right to the panel box so our power is going to come to an outlet here then we're going to run it to one here then hit the one i just showed you and it's going to go up into the ceiling and it's going to come down on this wall run across then it's going to power all these outlets this is the home run going to the panel box that's going to power all the receptacles around this room so i know there needs to be a receptacle right here as the first receptacle it's going to so i'm going to go ahead and measure up off the floor 18 inches and put a mark and that's going to be the top of our outlet box and that's the same as all the other outlet boxes around the house so i'm going to do that around the whole garage and then I'm going to put an X on the side of the stud in which the outlet box is going to be placed. Now there's one instance over here on this wall where I can't put it this height. And I'm going to show you that when I get to it. So I'm going to go ahead and lay out this whole garage and go from there. All right, you may run into this situation as well. I want to put an outlet on this wall, of course. So I want to go as low as possible. And I cannot go any lower than the bottom of this wall. If I went any lower, I'd have to cut out this band board. I don't want to do that so it's going to be 21 inches to the bottom of my receptacles on this wall which is going to be different than the rest of them which that's okay so let's go ahead and just put an x on the side of the stud that we're going to be putting outlets on so now what i'm going to do is walk around the room and each one of those studs are just marked i'm going to drop an outlet box in front of it and then i'm going to go through and nail them all up all at once and if you're wondering, these are 18 cubic inch single gang boxes. And these can easily accept two 12 2 wires and the actual outlet as far as the electrical box fill goes. If you need any more wires in it than that, you're going to have to step up to a 22.5 cubic inch box. All right, let's go ahead and drop these off and get them nailed up. I want to show you how to anchor this outlet box to the stud. And if you're watching my channel, you see me do this a lot as far as anchoring these, but I just wanted to show anybody that hasn't seen my channel before. But as you can see here, there's little tabs on the sides of the box. These little tabs are used as spacers from the stud so drywall can go around it and the box ends up flush. So all you gotta do, wherever you marked your box to set, go ahead and place it there. And right there looks good. And then all you gotta do is drive the nails into the stud. Then drive the bottom one. That's all there is to it. Now go through and nail all these up. Then I'll start drilling holes for wires. So what I like to do to keep my wires running straight is I like to measure up right off the floor about 24 inches, make a mark on the stud so that way when I go to drill my holes in the center of the stud, they're running nice and straight so the wires aren't all up and down and jagged looking. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to all the studs that I need to run wires through. And some people have mentioned use a laser level and stuff like that. So that's fine too, but I'm just going to do this because it's so convenient. I already got my tape measure and my pen. I don't want to run out and grab another tool. So let's do it. So now to drill the hole, I use a 3 8 drill bit and I just hold right in the center of that stud and drill right through it. Now do that to all the studs that we marked for the path of the wire. So the nice thing about this situation is we can use these holes that were already drilled for this other side of the wall to run our wires through. So we're just gonna come through here through the same holes and drop down to our outlets. So to run the wire, it's pretty straightforward. Just unravel however much wire you need and start fishing it through the holes. Now there's a couple nuances that you gotta do once you get to the outlet and I wanna show you that now. 
All right, so once you run the wire over to the next outlet, what we need to do is make sure we allow at least six inches sticking out of this outlet box. So what I do, I just curl it down around the box, leave at least six to eight inches, and then I know that's long enough on this end, so I'm just going to go ahead and push it into that receptacle box. And you've got to take pliers sometimes to punch out the back of these. And it just makes it way easier to get the wire started in there. And then slide it in and pull it through. And now let's go back to the other outlet and cut the wire to length. So now on this outlet, we do the same thing. Curl it around the back of the outlet box, about six or eight inches, cut it to length. And whatever you do, just make sure you're not too stingy and cut it too short. That's really the key here. Punch out the back of that outlet box, and then we just continue running from outlet to outlet, just like that. And I'm not gonna staple this yet because I got another wire coming from this end. So once you got two wires in an outlet box, it's time to staple them. And I'm gonna use a half inch staple for this 12-2 wire. And these can be found in my Amazon store. There's a link in the description below so you can go check those out but you just nail this within six inches of the receptacle box per code in my area so go ahead and nail that on snug and that's all there is to it then after you do that just roll these wires up and place them into the box because you need the drywall installed before we do anything else with these wires Now that I got all the receptacles roughed in, I'm going to address the lighting and the switches. That's why I ran these three wires here beside this 36 inch entry door. It's the garage side door. So I want to switch one for the inside lights and a switch to operate the outside lights that's right outside this door. So I'm going to turn the camera over down here to where the switches are going to be and show you what I'm doing. So the first thing I do is measure my switch box height and I'm going to make it 48 inches to the top of the switch box. And I usually use a permanent marker or a pen just easier to see that way. And then after I do that, the uh, switch box has nails on each side of it, just like an outlet box. So we're gonna go ahead and place that into position to where it goes. And be sure you don't hit your wires while you're doing this. So I'll just kind of hold them out of the way and just go ahead and nail that into place. There's one in the top and there's a nail in the bottom. All right, now that's nice and secure. So now I'm gonna place these wires inside of the box the order they came down from the ceiling. And this one's coming in from the side. So we're actually gonna staple all these together or something like that. So what I like to do is take something and go ahead and hit this internal clamp and break it loose where each wire is going. What I'm gonna do now is just fish the wires in the order in which they're coming down the wall here. So this one's coming down first and you just gotta push that internal clamp so that it opens up. And it can be a little uh, stiff running these wires back and through here. And the next one's gonna be this three wire. That's for the three-way switch for the inside lights. So same thing. And then we're gonna put this one in. And the inspector likes to see one wire per slot in the back of this box. So try not to double each slot with a wire. Since our biggest wire is this 12-3 wire, I gotta use a three quarter inch wire staple. So in order to do that, we're just gonna go ahead and hold all these wires together and then place the staple over the wires and then just drive the staple into the stud. And I like to put my wire staples within six inches of my electrical boxes. And now the wire's already labeled. This is the power going to the outside for the outside lights. This is the wire going to the outside lights. And this is the wire for the three-way switch that's gonna operate the inside lights. If you need to know more details about how to wire a three-way switch, check out this video link up above. That's gonna give you more details. It's when I did the hallway in this house and the rough wire on how to do a three-way switch is in that video. If I was going to protect the whole circuit using a GFI outlet, not a breaker, I would have to hook it to this outlet because the power is coming into it. 
So it's going to protect all the outlets thereafter and the one that it's actually connected to. So that's why you need to come to your first outlet if you're going to use a GFI outlet instead of a GFI breaker. The options to give your garage ground fault protection is the outlet, and I explained to you just a moment ago on how that worked, but this is one I just wanted to show it to you. But what I'm gonna use is this breaker. It has ground fault protection and arc fault protection built in one, and this is 20 amp, of course, because that's what we need in a garage. And I just wanted to show you guys what I'm gonna be doing for ground fault protection. I'm just gonna give you one little final walkthrough here. So this cable coming down from the ceiling is for the three-way switch. This one is the power coming in to power the outside light. And then this one runs up and over to the outside light. And as you can see here, we have it stubbed out the wall right there. And then as far as the receptacles go, they're all powered around the room on, the, on its own circuit, like I mentioned earlier. And then over here is our first receptacle that if you're going to use the GFI outlet, you got to come to that one first, then it's going to charge all, or protect all of these on the GFI protection around the whole garage. And then here are the switches. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is going to be to control all the lights and the outside lamp post right there. And all these lights are on a separate circuit and all the receptacles are on its own circuit. If you have any comments or questions about this project, be sure to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. And again, be sure to check out my Amazon store for any of the products you see me using in this video. And I want to say thanks a lot for watching. Be sure to subscribe, hammer that like button, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.